Have you started accepting merchant or credit card payments, ACH, and you're having fees come out and you're wondering like, how do I enter that into QuickBooks so that my accounts receivable is accurate, so my customer accounts are accurate? You are in the right place. If we've never met before, hello, I'm Candace Camper, and I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence and also simplicity within QuickBooks. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. How do you enter in your merchant fees? Come look over my shoulder and let's jump in to QuickBooks. So there are three ways to enter in your income into QuickBooks. You can either create invoices, which means your customers are gonna pay you later, a sales receipt, which means you're paid at time of service or you're trying to catch up on some old data entry, or you're gonna go straight to your income through either a record deposit or the bank fees. So if you are using invoices and let's say that you already created an invoice for your customer, let's go back and look at one. For example, you had $100 in book sales plus sales tax of $7. So they owed you $107 total and they paid you 107, but maybe you only got $104 or $103, depending on your bank fees from your merchant. How do you handle that? So what you're going to want to do is first go in and apply your payment to your customer. So you're going to go in, find your customer, and you're going to put in the full amount that they paid you, which was the amount of the total invoice, right? Because they paid you the full amount. You're going to choose to put it to undeposited funds because undeposited funds is where all of your different merchants are going to sit until they actually get recorded to your bank. You could choose to say it came through check or if it's a credit card, you'd actually choose credit card. Now, if you choose this kind of credit card, QuickBooks is going to try to process it for you. This example is what if you are processing outside of QuickBooks, then you're going to come over here and you're going to click save and close. And let me make sure I click the invoice. If yours, if you forgot to click the invoice, do that. Okay. That's where you're applying it against. And then we're going to click save and close. And look at that, a little one pops up. So we're going to follow the journey. That's the proper way to use QuickBooks. And we're going to click record deposit. We're going to choose all of your different payments that come into this one deposit. So until you've received from your merchant, like what are the different transactions that are going to the deposit? Um, wait. And when you get that data, select all of your deposits that go into that, like all of those payments that go into that one deposit. You're going to choose the bank that it went into, the date with which it was deposited on. And then you're going to come down here. You're going to see the customer and you're going to see it goes to undeposit funds. That's perfect. Sometimes people will say to me, but why doesn't it show the income account here? And it's because that was actually done on the invoice. Okay. So they were going to come down here and we're going to say it came from Stripe is our vendor in this example. So this could be PayPal, wherever, whomever you're paying the merchant fee to, you want to set them up as a vendor. Then under from account, what would you pick here? Yes. Whatever you want to see, on your profit and loss and you want to make sure that you're choosing the expense side so if you do bill your customers for the merchant fee which some states allow and some don't so always do your research on that you would then adjust it on the invoice that's a totally different training this is just exactly how do you enter in the expense you're going to click merchant fees then you come over here and you're going to enter in whatever it is now this is the key um you're going to do negative and if it was a four dollar fee you put in four dollars if it was $3.75, like whatever was the exact amount that you were charged for the merchant. If you're not sure what you would do is you would do the math of the difference. So see how it was 107 minus 375. I actually get 103.25 in my account. Whatever the amount is, it was actually deposited into your account minus what the, you know, like from what the customers paid you. And then the difference, that's going to be what your fee is. Usually most merchants will actually tell you what the fee is, but if you don't know, that's how you can find it out. All right. So then this is actually what's deposit into your account. If that matches in the account on the date, you're going to click save and close and you are done. That's how you're going to handle it. Now, how do we make sure we entered it in correctly? That's something I always am teaching inside Commerce QuickBooks. Like make sure you understand what's happening. If you go under reports, company finance, financials, profit and loss standard, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the month of September, since that's what we were doing our example as. You'll see your $100 worth of sales minus your $375 in expenses. You made profit or have net income of $96.75. It may not be profit, but it's definitely net income. Now you might be saying, what about that sales tax? That's going to be on which report? It's not the profit and loss. It's going to be the balance sheet because it's money that you owe. So it's not income to you. You're holding it as a liability. 
Let me know if this video has helped you. Give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments. Have you been struggling with merchant fees and did this video make it super simple? And now you know how to handle it. If for example, you're going straight to the bank account, you would go straight to your income account, but you still do the negative. That's an asterisk. Make sure you write that down because if you add it as a positive, it's not going to bounce. You're going to be off exactly double what it should be because you're doing it as a positive number instead of a negative. If you want to receive these tips and tricks straight to your inbox, you can actually go up above or down below because I send them out every single week. And if you are needing help with like really learning how to customize QuickBooks to your business, how to learn exactly how to enter in your income expenses, read reports like I have started teaching you to do today, I would recommend checking out Confidence with QuickBooks. Go up above or down below and we will give you all the details. Have a amazing day. I look forward to seeing you inside my next tip and trick. Bye. Thank you.